So, SwiftUI just came out yesterday and you're probably really excited to test out all of its new capabilities, right? However, if you haven't updated your Mac OS to 10.15 Catalina Beta, uh, you won't exactly be able to get your application up and running using a Swift UI. So one trick to get around this new limitation here is to actually update your OS to 10.14.4 or 10.14.5 and use Playgrounds to render out your Swift UI application. So I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like right now. You can see my OS is actually 10.14.5 right over here. Let me close out of view. And this is just a regular playground project using Xcode 11. Let me show you that as well. So Xcode 11 beta is right here. And this guy, everything works out in this live view mode. It's enabled, I can click on these guys and the application works out just like the simulator. Uh, the only thing that you have to do to enable this is to create a new file and all the way at the bottom of your file, you want to specify a hosting controller with a root view of some kind of content view that is created using the Swift UI. So there's a lot of code in here that I wrote out for my sample project. Uh, let me show you how this works using a brand new playground. So let me create one right now. So, you know, standard old file, new playground, uh, generate the one with a single view. This will be a lot easier to work with. And let's see a Mojave playground and uh, let's go ahead and create this guy. So you get this file right here, right? Nothing too special. Let me expand this so you can see what the heck is going on here. And let's see, we are pretty good. You can run this inside of the playground area and hopefully you can kind of see what's going on. And you see we have hello world specified by this controller and the label right there. So nothing too confusing yet so far. You should be familiar with this process by now. So the only thing you have to do is, again, you want to change the uh, view controller to use a hosting controller for your Swift UI framework. Uh, this is done very easily by first wiping out that guy. You can try to type in the hosting controller, but obviously you can't get the autocomplete to come out. You want to import Swift UI and use the hosting controller. So this guy is UI hosting controller. This comes with one important constructor called the root view right over here. So that looks good. And now all you gotta do is specify what this root view needs to be. Um, basically any type of view inside of Swift UI has to conform to this uh, little view protocol. So let me type out custom content view conform to the view protocol there. And I believe you can see the documentation if you open up the right side. Let's see if this actually works. It says that it's a piece of user interface. You can click on this for more details. But you know, I'll kind of walk you through how to create this game. Uh, for every one of these views, you want to make sure that you have some kind of body, kind of like that, but that's not that helpful. You want to say var, body, colon and some view like that. I can't explain exactly what the syntax means, but this is pretty much what you need. Instead of here, you can say text and you know, uh, custom, make sure to put it in a string. So custom content here and close it off like so. All right, this guy is going to be used right over here. Just create a new instance uh, using the paren paren and all this stuff should be good to go. I'm going to enable uh, let's see, I'm going to turn on automatic run. And as I just make changes here, you'll see it on the right side. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and it should show up right now. It does take a while, but I'm on a pretty fast machine. So this is looking okay. Uh, now what you can do instead of the body is you can just modify these guys. So let's try to give it a font of something like a system font with a design. I'll say 14 and dot. Let's use monospace to see what this guy gives us. So obviously Playgrounds is like extremely buggy ever since the very beginning. And uh, after you wait a while and your code is typed out correctly, then you'll get the actual Playground to render out your live view. Make sure to have this live view enabled. So editor only and live view looks like this. Again, it's extremely buggy, but I kind of find that uh, making edits inside of Playgrounds is actually faster than uh, the Xcode Live Preview. I prefer this more than Xcode, uh, the Live Preview actually. But anyhow, if you want to get more used to developing Swift UI code, you can just type in this code and experiment inside of this body here. 
For example, if I want to stack a couple of text labels, you can do this very easily using vStack. And anytime you specify a container, you have to use a brace. Uh, inside of the braces, you just say that, that, and that, and you should be okay. Uh, you wait a little bit, it'll spin, spin, spin. Eventually, you'll see this view rendered out. So those are the labels, so, you know, one, two, three, and let's see, four, 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 and you'll get your couple of labels like that. So you can obviously modify these things to be whatever you want. Let's say you use the font of, let's see, uh, let's see, body, what does that do? Let's see, body does that right there. And let's try to get a lot more text and try to see if this works this time. So that, 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 it's going to be truncated on the right side. I'm going to now specify number of lines or line limit of nil. I'm hoping that this will wrap. And now it finally wraps, so that looks good. You can modify these guys to be, uh, you know, better versions of fonts like headline. I think this is going to be a little bit smaller and bolded like that. So pretty good stuff. And what else can you do here? Well, if you want to do something crazy like change the color, you can specify color. I think that's how you do it. I think something is wrong with the autocomplete. Let me see if color works here. So color and red. So obviously the playground sucks hard, but once you get used to doing this, uh, you'll get the live preview to render out this stuff. Uh, something more advanced is Inside of your stack, let's say you want to stack something, or not stack, but you want to overlay a label on top of everything. You can do some crazy stuff like overlay. Uh, let's see, text, and I believe you can just use my overlay text and just try to run this. I feel like this is going to work, and you'll see my overlay text right uh, in front of everything. So, you know, give this guy a color of uh, blue, maybe, and give it a font. Uh, something like large title maybe you know you can obviously play around this stuff until you're happy but this is a really easy way to kind of get into the game of playing around with swift ui to see what's possible for example if you want to specify some spacing between these elements here you can just say dot spacing like this i believe and specify eight i think that's how it works but that's not the correct syntax it's a little confusing as to what you need to type but I believe it's inside of here. So I'm gonna say spacing and 24. This is going to allow spacing of 24 right between all these elements there. If you wanna modify this to be an H stack, it'll stack everything horizontally. So a really easy way to specify your layout inside of code so that it's like really easy to just look at it and see exactly what it does. H stack, text, 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 horizontal stack with text, text, and text. Super simple stuff, and I'm really finding myself uh, enjoying typing out the Swift UI code. Uh, I find that it's very similar to Flutter widgets. Uh, you obviously don't want this syntax to grow too crazy. So you imagine if your UI is very complex, then this guy just grows out of control. So you can just take these guys and then extract it into an external view. So what I mean is, maybe I'll just show you this and then I'll let you go for today. So let's say detail. Uh, view, view and var body and some view like this. And you just take all of this and then put it inside of here. And then inside of here, you just say detail view. And I think that's going to work. You know, this is a good way to refactor your code so that you don't have too much crazy widgets going on inside of one body. So hopefully you found today's video helpful on how to launch Swift UI instead of Mac OS Mojave. I'll be putting more lessons on how to construct more complex views using Swift UI. So make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like that. All right, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.